I really do think this one is headed for the trash. If I were to end right here, what should we title this painting? <laughs> and he's got boo-boos? I don't know if I can salvage this one, but let's see what we can do. So let me set up my camera so y'all can kind of see what I'm gonna do. And yes, I do film everything on my smartphone. Isn't that crazy? First thing I'm gonna do is put on my glasses. So this picture was by Kaylee Schmidt. So thank you, Kaylee, on Rabbit Lovers Facebook group. And yes, I'm always trolling those Facebook groups for beautiful reference photos. I want to go back a little in time before we start fixing this and get into the dregs of creating this super ugly stage we're starting with. When I saw that this painting looked so gosh awful, I really didn't think there was any way to make it beautiful. I got really crazy with the experimentation. And I hope this will be the main takeaway from this video actually. Make mistakes, experiment, go to the edge of absolute no return to an aesthetically pleasing work. It is in this place of play, experimentation, and judgment-free headspace that you will develop your own style and have artistic breakthroughs. Let me show you the hot mess I made before I started pulling this painting back together. So I'm pulling my wet rigger through still half wet paint to draw it out to make these swirly squiggles. I don't even know what I'm doing. Um, some of them, maybe they're whiskers. I don't know. I was just playing and pushing, pushing, pushing the experimentation to <laughs> its max, not knowing at all if this would turn out to look good or not, assuming it was gonna look bad. And that kind of gives you the freedom to experiment when you think, well, this painting's done and lost anyway. It's not gonna look good. I might as well just toy with it. Okay, now back to our regularly scheduled programming of pulling a painting back together, bringing it back from the abyss of being thrown into the trash. <laughs> you won't be able to save every experimental, ugly, leaning painting, but you will be able to save a lot more than you would think with some of the things I'm gonna show you in the rest of this video. Take it away, Rachel. The first thing that I wanna do to pull this painting out of the ugliness and into the light of beauty is to have a focal point. The human mind is wired to be attracted to look at eyes. Lucky us portrait artists. It's because we can paint a beautiful eye, and if you can paint a beautiful eye, the rest of the painting can be pretty darn ugly, <laughs> and it will still look really good. So the first thing that we're gonna do to try to salvage this painting is to put a beautiful eye in this bunny. Luckily, I chose a good reference photo that gave me a beautiful eye. So that's another side tip here is start with a great reference photo that has a beautiful eye and has beautiful reflections in the eye that you can really capture and play up in your painting to really make it look kind of more awesome than it really is maybe. <laughs> or maybe you really are an awesome painter and everything looks good. So lucky you. For the rest of us poor little artists who are quite imperfect, if we just focus on getting that eye right, the rest kind of falls together usually. So let's see what we can do. All right, so we're gonna start with some burnt sienna. And because I don't wanna lose control of it, I'm gonna dot out the heel and pick up a little bit more burnt sienna just in my tip. Get that in. And then I'm gonna get some thicker burnt sienna in there. And we're gonna look at our reference photo closely. Just let your good reference photo tell you what to do. Don't try to invent, reinvent the wheel. When you can reinvent the rest of the painting and be creative in the rest of the areas of the painting, like I was with this one, but with the eye, my advice is to really get a lot of realism in the eye. So I'm putting in some burnt sienna and I'm going to make sure I have all the values represented in the eye. Lights, mediums, and darks. Tiny little details. So I put in my light burnt sienna and now I'm going to put in darker burnt sienna. And I'm going to make sure that I paint around the highlight in the eye. And in the highlight in the eye, I really need to clean out my brush. Oh, you want to learn a little side hack I just learned? Put a little toilet paper roll and you can hold your brushes. And then also when you need to clean out your brush, looky here, looky there. You can just blot it right there. How cool is that? Thank you to Diane Zimmerman's amazing watercolor beginners and beyond group. Two different people posted that there. I will put their names on the 
screen if I can find them. So this shadow, I'm gonna get a little darker blue and I'm gonna try to keep my, my blue a little bit more pure here too. And also I'm gonna bring this color into the eyeliner because I actually do see that color in the eyeliner and that just adds another pop of wow. And we like pops of wow, all right? This is actually a printout of the messed up stage of my bunny painting that I've already finished. Like, you know those cooking shows where they're like, boop, put it in, and then one second later, boop, here's the finished amazing product. Now I can do the same thing because I have a printer that will print on watercolor paper. So that's what this is. This is actually printout of the ugly stage and I've already done this painting once, so you're gonna have to stay tuned to the end to see what happens. <laughs> okay, this is voiceover Rachel, and I'm gonna speed up this footage so you can get a taste of what I did. And this is my actual footage of the real painting, by the way, and it's available as a full real-time start-to-finish tutorial with downloadable reference supply list and line drawing, as are most of the paintings you've seen on this channel or behind me on my shelves. I'll put a link below for you to join my website in exchange for the downloadables if you would like to try this painting too. But anyway, what you see me doing next is using a silver black velvet round size 4 and putting in cream consistency, lamp black, eyeliner details and making sure they're really dark so they really pop. Then I get some burnt sienna cream consistency to add to part of the iris, not the whole iris, because I want some light burnt sienna and some dark burnt sienna in the iris because that adds, adds depth and dimension as opposed to if I left the iris all one flat medium brown. You're cooking with gas too when you're painting other eyes like cat eyes that have more than one color and more than one value, then you can really get some beautiful results. I also make sure I capture the personality of this bunny by emphasizing the cat eye eyeliner and then I use lifting techniques to soften that large white eye glint and then I put in some blue to show the reflection of the sky to really push the realism and wow factor up a notch. I add some splashes of blue on the surrounding facial area to again add emphasis to the eye area so the viewer's eye keeps coming back to this anchor area of the painting. All right, the next thing that I did in the painting. I'm even going to look at my footage over here on my computer. I want to make sure I'm being very authentic with exactly what I did. All right, I put some more reds in the ear. Another thing that you can really do to pull together your painting is to use pops of red, but not too much, just enough. My favorite red, be sure to watch my video, my 10 favorite colors that I cannot live without, which you see here. One being M. Graham, Naphthal Red. And one of the things I love about this paint is it has this beautiful diffusion. So it just seeps into everywhere. Like if I put a big puddle of water here, watch what happens if I drop it into this puddle, it explodes. Boom. All right, now watch. Will other paints do that? Let's see. Let's try burnt sienna. Nope. Nope. It's not exploding. What if we put red right there? Boom. Look at it explode. Naphthal Red is so cool for that. And it can really be a powerful paint color to paint with because of that. And also it's just a gorgeous red that mixes equally well with yellow and blue, the other two primaries. What does that tell you? That it's a pretty pure red? That's what it tells you. So we're gonna put that gorgeous, spectacular red. Boom. And we're gonna call attention to these awesome ears that have this gorgeous shape. And we're also going to put a little bit more red down in here, putting a pop of red in that eye. So yes, what you see me doing here is using red in layers. Everything's very dry and I put a pop of red on top of that burnt sienna I put in the eye to add even more depth of color. So just adding a little touch of red over a burnt sienna area will make it look a little bit more colorful. And then you see after my paint dried in the ears, it kind of dulled down and that's what watercolor does. That's called a drying shift. There's actually a term for that where watercolor lightens up and grays down as it dries. And so what you can do is just keep adding more layers. So here you see me going in again and putting another layer of that M. Graham naphthol red on top of the red that I painted before. If you would like to learn from me even more in depth, 
come check out my Patreon, where for just $5, you can get instant access to a library of over 30 tutorials where you can watch me paint and explain as I go in real time so you can paint along with me. Plus, you get a downloadable traceable, a reference photo, and a supply list with each tutorial. And then the rest of this ear, I just kind of defined it a little more to give it a little bit more shape because one of the things that you can also use in your painting to pull a painting together is shape. That's why bunnies, the human form, horses, they all have limbs that go out in space that break up the negative space around them, which makes for an interesting composition. So the shapes of a bunny ear, of a bunny's ear jutting into space are make for really interesting shapes that make a painting more fascinating than say a perfectly round lump of bunny. Like there's other bunny pictures that I've seen where their ears are flat against their back and they're just like little balls. That doesn't make an interesting painting because the negative shapes in the background aren't as interesting. So you almost want to think like an abstract painter too when you're designing paintings and when you're bringing a painting like this back to life. How can I capitalize on the shapes that are already in this reference material? Where are those strong shapes and how can I accentuate them? In the case of a bunny, it's really easy. Just like it's easy with horses and people too. I'm talking too much. The next thing I want to think about when you're trying to strengthen a painting is your Rembrandt edges. So this is James Gurney's book, Imaginative Realism, and in it he talks about what he calls the windmill principle, where he knows that the windmill, you know the painting of the windmill on the hill by Rembrandt? He noticed that the blaze of the windmill had four different value pairings, dark blade against dark sky, light blade against dark sky, light blade against light sky and dark blade against dark sky. Did I get them all four right? I think so. So ever since then, I look at every single painting I do. And you can either look at components like the eye, the, the eye in this painting, if it's a really strong, well-painted eye, it'll have all those pairings with the surrounding fur even. Um, individual components like the ear can have Rembrandt four pairings if you really hold your mouth right. I found that even if you get three of the pairings, it can really make for a much stronger design in your painting if you pay attention to your Rembrandt edges. All right, so let's strengthen this painting even further by putting in our Rembrandt edges if we don't have them. So here is our light on light. Here is light on light. Here is dark on dark. Usually your dark on dark edges and your light on light edges are low contrast areas that are not as important. And you want your most important places where perhaps the eye is or near the eye. I'm going to put it here. I purposely left this area light in the study and also here to have a light bunny. Even though this is a black bunny, it will translate to this being a black bunny, I think, well enough. Your viewer's eye actually likes some mystery and some unexplained areas because the human brain wants to figure out places in the peripheral vision that aren't clearly stated. And that translates to a painting. If you have a painting with unexplained areas, like the white area I left on this bunny's back, the human brain actually looks at that and sees aesthetic beauty. So that can make your painting more aesthetic. And so here is gonna be our light on dark edge, okay? You could also have one here. But since I didn't do that in the final painting that we're doing, I'm not gonna put it here. But this would be a good place too, because this line leads down into the bunny, okay? So I'm gonna just quickly put in, and I'm gonna leave a little bit of white edge to tell the story of the edge. And this is French ultramarine. The color is not nearly as important as the value. And we want a pretty deep, rich French ultramarine. So I'm gonna put that really strong in there. So there we go. Now I have more of my Rembrandt windmill edges. I have light on dark. I have dark on dark. I have light on light even here, light on light here, and dark on light here. This line leads the eye down to the eye. And that's why bunny ears make such a great design element too, is because, big truck. <laughs> they can make lines that point the viewer's eye into the painting. In this case, your eye can slide right on down to that gorgeous eye that we're gonna really refine. And 
All right, so we're gonna let all that dry. I did a few other things. I might show you some of that footage. So let's look at a little bit more footage from the actual painting. Get some Windsor Violet, strong color. But just, I don't know, purple almost always makes everything look better. <laughs> it really does. Just, I love putting some purple in a painting. It goes with so many different color variety, uh, combinations. And it's no different in this painting. I just thought it was so pretty and it complemented the other colors nicely. And I already had some purple in this painting. So now what did I do? I went in on the shadow side of the bunny and now I'm even painting some of that purple right over the side of this face to quiet down some of this face area that's in shadow. So it's the shadow side of your subject that has the dark on dark edge usually. And you can paint the background color right over your subject as long as it's totally dry. So when your paint sets and it's dry, you can go over with a glaze like this is a glaze where I'm using tea consistency, Windsor Violet, here and there in different parts of the painting to pull it all together to tell the viewer's eye this is all one painting and it all works together. Trust me. And the biggest job I got done there was to create my dark on dark edge against that. The bunny's right our left side of his shoulder against that purple lower left hand corner of the painting for our dark on dark Rembrandt windmill principal edge. Thank you, James Gurney. I cannot say thank you to James Gurney enough. He's got a, wet, a YouTube channel too, by the way. This is my angled shader. It is an acrylic painting brush. It's a little stiffer than a watercolor brush and I'm using it for lifting. I wet it with clean, clear water, but I'm gonna start adjusting, going into the adjusting stage and I'm using it to scrub at set paint. So you gotta let your paint dry and then you scrub it with this damp brush don't have to have an angled shader. It can be any stiffer brush, a scrubber, or an acrylic brush. Um, I had the shape of his face a little wrong down in this area. So notice I totally changed the shape of his face there. And it already looks so much less alien. Yeah. <laughs> we no longer have alien bunny. But I'm painting with this angled shader too. Thick lamp black paint when it's dried and set really reactivates readily. So it softens really nicely. So I'm almost scrubbing this to the point where I'm gonna need to repaint it, which is fine. Using I'm my just... angled shader to kind of redefine some of these areas. Redefining and in some cases, totally erasing and fixing. <laughs> and that's, that's the story of watercolor. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to do the next thing, which I really think pulled this painting together beautifully. And that is these Micron pens. They're archival art pens. They're made for art. Uh, a lot of uh, line and wash, ink and wash artists use these. And I love the look. And I love to scribble with these. And if you scribble in enough places, um, it can really, like, you can scribble along this ear to kind of define this ear just a little bit. You still have your light on light edge, don't you? And then you can scribble in here and scribble in here and, and pull it all together. And then also the whiskers, um, the whiskers, this is specific to animals with whiskers. And usually in other paintings, there might be other things that you could put little, I call it jewelry. Be sure to watch my jewelry video, what is jewelry and how important it is in the painting and what you can use it for to really strengthen a painting. It's so important to put jewelry in your painting and usually, it's at this stage that we do that. So an example of jewelry in this painting is gonna be these scribbles. I just, I don't know why I like that. And also I'm gonna use some gouache. Where's my white gouache? Let me get it. Excuse me and I'm gonna get my rigger brush. See this rigger it has really long bristles. This is great for painting whiskers. And I often use this exact brush to apply masking for whiskers, or you can do it after the fact with white gouache and a little rigger brush. So I'm just gonna get my gouache activated. Usually what I do to get enough gouache is I just squeeze a little extra because it really dries really hard and you can reactivate it 
but it takes kind of a lot of reworking. So often I use white gouache as one of the last refining touches I do to pull a painting together. Here I use it to add a highlight to the eye. Since this bunny had a light line around his eye, I also enhanced the eyeliner with my white gouache. I'll also enhance a little highlight on the nose and add a few dry brushed fur strokes where the light hits the fur the most. This is also a great way to add light fur texture. Just make sure your fur strokes are in the direction of the fur and about the same length as the fur you're painting. This also adds some really nice contouring for a 3D effect. I add some white whiskers with Uniball Broad white gel pen as well. And by the way, my supply list is public to anyone, both in the description of this video and on my website at rachelstudio.com slash Patreon Index. There you will see my supply list. You can click on that. It will take you onto my Patreon and that is a free post where you will find links to all my favorite art supplies. And those are affiliate links, so thank you for using those because I do earn a little extra money when you use my links. Honestly, I really didn't think that this painting would get to this stage where I'd be willing to show it to the world, and I just love it. So it really paid off to experiment. It doesn't always pay off to experiment. I'm not gonna sit here and say that it will play experiment that's what art should be is play and experimentation and that's when you'll find your style but that is the value of doing studies and just having mistake paintings that then you don't care about them because they're already messed up so you can just really experiment with them and I encourage you to always be doing that and that's what is really going to help you find your style too is doing these experiments making mistakes and being brave so I hope that helped and let's take a look at the final painting. I'm gonna... All right, so here is the final painting. And I was really happy with how it came out. I loved these beautiful purples down in here and the splashy green. And I enjoy seeing some of y'all's paintings when you post on the Facebook group. Be sure to come post on the Facebook group and show me your work. I'd love to see it. And I'll put that Facebook group link here and I will see you next time. Now go watercolor your world. Bye everybody.